Hey everyone, this video is going to be a bit about dragonhorn farming and in particular Nadra's path through Hyrule and the Depths. I'll also be discussing the differences of dragons between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom and finally unlocking Leneru Skyview Tower and the Wetland Skyview Tower also. I'll leave uh, timestamps in the description below. Now, Nadra enters into the depths from the East Hill Chasm in Kakariko Village as you can see him doing here. And you can probably notice that he's glowing this beautiful, radiant, neon blue, teal color. And if we get close to him and shoot his crown. There we go, we should be able to collect Nadra's horn. And Nadra's horn works exactly the same as it did in the previous game. It gives you around a 30 minute stat effects boost on recipes. And uh, you can sell it for around 300 rupees as well as uh, a new mechanic in Tears of the Kingdom, you can fuse it to your weapons uh, for around plus 26 uh, damage for it in increase. Um, you can probably notice there at the base of his spikes, uh, there's a shard, a glowing shard. Uh, you can collect those also and I'll talk about those in a bit. But what's uh, mainly changed in um, Tears of the Kingdom is that dragons now don't do damage when you jump onto them. As you can see here, me clinging onto it fine. Before in Breath of the Wild, you wouldn't be able to land on a dragon. Um, in this game, you can land on a dragon. Not only that, you can land on a dragon at any height and not receive any fall damage. So that's another thing to be keep in mind. Now, um, the dragons, they have a fixed cyclical path that takes around 20 minutes to complete in total. And their shards and their horns, uh, or the scales and their horns, I should say, uh, regenerate every 10 minutes or so. Now, this shard of Nadra Spike, these are on along his body, and there are around 12 in total, I believe. I collected 11 on this run, but I'm pretty sure I missed one. These uh, probably respawn uh, every blood moon, but I haven't tested that yet, but I'm pretty sure that they do. Whereas his horn and his scales, they regenerate every 10 minutes, like I mentioned earlier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and collect as many of these as I can, and walk my way to his uh, head. So you can see the light routes below, which basically means that we're traveling through the depths and it takes around 10 minutes uh, for Nadra to tra travel through the depths. So I'm going to speed that up a little bit. Once we see that light route on the left, it means that Nadru is going to start to rise up and exit the depths um, through Nadru's snowfield chasm. Now before he does that, it's been around 10 minutes, so that should mean that his crown and his spikes are going to start to glow. And there we go, they're glowing that beautiful blue again. That means that he's ready to farm so just farmed another nadra spike and like i mentioned earlier it takes around that took around 10 minutes to regenerate okay so i'm just waiting for him to exit out of nadra snowfield chasm now and my cold resistance about to run out so I'm going to have to eat something soon. And as you can see, I'm wearing uh, one item of cold resistant clothing and I'm eating um, a recipe which was made by cooking uh, five spicy peppers. And having those both um, gives me enough cold resistant to um, withstand the cold around nature. As he exits now, you can see the Nehru Skyview Tower. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the updraft generated by Nadra to reach the Skyview Tower. I'm 
just gonna make my way around the mountain and fly past the goddess statue. And work my way towards the Nehru Skyview Tower. Now there's some metal boxes at the top of, uh, around the base of the Skyview Tower and they have um, cold meat inside which allows you to be get some resistance from the heat and there's quite a few of them there so it's uh, worthwhile breaking them but I'm in a bit of a rush because I want to make I want to see if I can um, catch Nadra on the way back down Okay, so right next to Kakariko you can see the chasm and also next to uh, Mount Lanayru you can see the purple chasm as well. So that's where he uh, enters and exits the um, depths respectively. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier you can um, dive onto the dragons and you won't receive any fall damage and that's exactly what I'm going to do now so I'm diving headfirst onto Nadra and I shouldn't receive any fall damage. Yep, so no fall damage received there. Okay, I'm just going to speed it up as Nadra passes through the surface of Hyrule. So it's almost been about 10 minutes now, so I'm going to go closer to his crown so that I can uh, farm another one of his horns. <sighs> and in the background we can see the wetland skyview tower also. Okay, so he's glowing again, so it's time to farm one of his horns, so I'm going to jump up, shoot his crown again, pick up his horn, there we go. Now I'm going to move away from his head because I don't want to get hit by one of his ice projectiles. I'm going to wait here, I think that's a safe distance. And the next target is the wetland skyview tower so i'm gonna fly over there so the base of the tower is surrounded by thorns so i'm just going to use a bit more um, stamina Regeneration here, so I can get right into the into the base. And uh, see, the sliding doors are blocked by more thorns. But because it's raining, you can't just shoot a normal fire arrow. Um, you're going to either have to cover up that area um, so that the rain is not reaching the thorns, and then light it up. Or I had happened to have a flame emitter on me, so I just um, put some consistent heat on it there and. Managed to make a small opening that I squeezed through in order to activate the tower.
Okay, so that's another part of the map updated. And now I can rejoin Nedra on his last leg back into the East Hill Chasm in Kakarika Village. See there the Ring of Ruins in the background, as well as Hyrule Castle and Death Mountain. So we're getting close to Kakarika. Now, this is quite a tedious way to farm dragon horns, especially in comparison to Breath of the Wild. So I think the best way, or I'm gonna try it out. Um, is to farm the horn as they enter and exit the chasms and do that for each elemental dragon um, and do rounds and by doing rounds you're not waiting the full 10 minutes for the same dragon to respawn in the time that you're waiting for one dragon to respawn you can move on to the next dragon so i'm going to try and make a video uh, on that and see if i can manage to get the right timings down for that so that i can show you guys um, but for now, we're just gonna head back to Kakarika Village, and that's gonna be about it for the video. This is the final part of Nature's um, journey, so I'm just gonna show that, and that'll be it for the video. So. So that's Nedra re-entering the chasm now. Take a picture for the compendium. That's going to be it for the video guys, thanks for watching, hope you liked it, bye.